Okay, so we're going to do a couple of uh, word problems, one, applications of exponential and logarithmic functions. And uh, you've had lots of practice of these, but we'll do a couple more here. Again, if you'd like to pause the video, you can and let people try it, but hopefully people have tried it already and we're just checking their answers. So here we've got a question. The half-life of strontonium-90 is 25 years. For a 100 milligram sample, how long would it take to decay to 22.5 milligrams? So obviously this is a decay question. So we got to go off and use our formula. M at T equals C times 2 to the negative T over H. Remember this formula will be given to you on the board um, for the, uh, the test, but you need to be able to pick it out. So we know this is the one for decay because you have the negative exponent and the graph will be going down. Okay, so let's do our inventory of terms. M at T is the mass at a given time. C is the initial mass. Uh, T is our time and H is our half-life. So it says the half-life is 25 years, so that's obviously here. A 100 milligram sample is the beginning. And it's decayed now to a certain mass after a certain time at 22.5. And we need to figure out how long it takes. So we go off and plug in this information, 22.5 equals 100 times 2 to the negative t over 25. So now it's obviously an exponential equation. We might need to use logarithms or whatever to get at t. First thing I notice is I want the term that has t in it by itself. So I want this by itself, so I'm going to have to divide by 100. Get rid of that 100 right away. This almost happens in every single question. So I'm going to divide both sides by 100, and we'll get 0 0.225 on this side, and 2 to the negative t over 25 over here. I don't think we can get a uh, common base for this, so I'm going to have to go straight to logs. So I'll take the log of both sides. Oh, sorry, I'll probably move that up for you. I'll take the log 0 0.225 and the log 2 to the negative t over 25. We do this so that we can bring down the negative t over 25. Now we can get rid of the log 2 by dividing. So log 0 0.225 divided by log 2 equals negative t or 25. I want t by itself. So I'm going to bring this 25 over. So I'm going to, since it's being divided by 25, I multiply by 25. I'm also going to take that negative and divide both sides by negative and take it to the other side. And so we'll have a negative 25 when we multiply. Log 0 0.225 all over log 2 equals t. Punch that in our calculator carefully we should get 53.8 equals t. What does that mean? Well, obviously we're dealing in years here, so therefore it will take 53.8 years, or a, to get to 22.5 milligrams or to decay to 22.5 milligrams. Okay, next. How long will it take for $200 to double if invested at 8% compounded order, uh, quarterly? So obviously this is not an exponential growth or decay question. So this is obviously not an... Uh, decay or exponential growth question, it is a money one. And so we're going to use the money formula. So A equals P bracket 1 plus I to the power of N. Over here we'll do our inventory of terms. So it says how long would it take $200 to double? So that means we're going to start with $200. So that means our principal is here. And doubling means that we would end with $400. And this is invested at 8% compounded quarterly. So the 8% talks about my interest. So it's 0 
<clears throat> except that's 8% per year, and we need it compounded quarterly. So you don't get the whole 8% the whole time. you got to divide it into four chunks. And so that means it'll be 0.02% is your I value. And then N, of course, is what we have to figure out. So we'll go and plug in those numbers. And we need to solve for n. Again, n is up in the exponents, so we're going to have to use our scales from this unit. Divide by 200 to get the term that has n by itself. So this is nice. 400 divided by 200 is 2. 0 0.02 to the power of n. Again, we can't find a common base, so we're going to have to take logs. Bring the end down. And now we can isolate by getting rid of that and divide it to the other side. Punch that in our calculator, we get 35. Now, this isn't quite as easy to just say, hey, it's 35. What does that mean? That means that the number of payments is 35. So the number of payments, this is 35. The question says, how long? Well, you could say 35 payments, but really we'd rather talk in years. So we stop and think for a second. Well, if it's 35 payments, and it's interest is given to you every, uh, every quarter, that means you get it four times a year. So we're going to do that divided by four, and we'll see that it's 8.75 years. So it's going to take 8.75 years for your little $200 to double to $400. And our last one is atmospheric pressure. So in atmospheric pressure, the formula is given to us. D equals 500 log P minus 2 all over 27. There's only two types of questions here. The one where I give you the pressure and you need to figure out the distance. This one, I'm giving you the distance, you need to figure out the pressure. Of course, the key on this one is remember, the only way I can try and trick you is give this to you in meters, and it has to be in kilometers. So we divide it by 1,000 to get kilometers. That puts us at 1.46 equals 500 log P minus 2 over 27. We now need to go off and um, put everything on one side and leave your log P on its own. So the steps, we're going to do this all in one step. It's divided by 27, so we're going to multiply by 27. We're going to get rid of this, so we're going to divide by um, 500. So 1.46 times 27. Divide by 500, that's going to leave me with just a log P minus 2. Do this in my calculator, I get 0 0.07884 equals log P minus 2. Add 2 to both sides and we get 2.07884 equals log P. We don't have an inverse operation for finding the log P. So we have to put it into something that we do know. We do know that this is base 10. And so we can convert this to an exponential equation. If it's log base 10, so it's 10 to some exponent. Well, here's the exponent, 2.07884 equals the answer of P. and punch that in your calculator. Again, it'd be accuracy is important, so if you actually save this number here on your memory or keep it on the screen or whatever, that would be best. But then you go 10 to the power of that, and we get roughly 119.9, which is given to you in kilopascals. And the only other one that we have is D. 
and I'm going to let you do that one, just finding the pH and the pH um, level. So refer to your notes if you need to. So good luck with those questions.